Joining me today is Carrington Warfield, and she is an author, a public speaker, and an event strategist. I kind of have a question about that because I feel like it's different from an event planner. Anyway, we, we're going to talk about today about oh, how to avoid procrastination so you can get things done and feel accomplished. But before we get into the conversation, I must give Carrington a moment to shine. Tell us more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for joining me today. Take it away. Uh, thank you, CJ, for having me. I'm super excited about being here today. Um, so a little bit about myself. Again, my name is Carrington Warfield, or otherwise known as Coach K, the Coach's Planner. And um, I'm an event strategist. Um, and I coach coaches and entrepreneurs on how to effectively host meetings and events, right? So I'm an event planner. But the difference in the two is that the event strategist is teaching you how to effectively host okay. an event, right? Whereas the event planner is more logistics, right? And so what I try to do is align your goals, right? Your business goals or your goals and objectives with strategies that are going to help you convert potential clients into actual clients. This is my second business. My first business was with um, a friend of mine. We had uh, a virtual event business called Virtual Visions. Um, so we kind of did that for a couple of years and then we kind of wanted to do some things on our own. So now I have my own business called Carrington Warfield LLC. And like I said, I'm an event strategist. And so that's kind of what I do. I love event planning, but I think the strategy side, um, I'm a lot more passionate about. Because okay. it, it gives me the opportunity to actually help people. Right. OK, OK, because when I saw that was your title, I was like, hmm, it sounds like it. it I, I figured it would have made sense that you started off as an event planner to really understand how to become an event strategist. But at the same time, I have to admit, I've never really heard someone describe themselves as an event strategist. So I was super curious about that. And I'd like to highlight us, us women out there that have been able to successfully go from employee to entrepreneur. And I, but I always ask that story. If you can share yours with me, just to inspire the listeners and myself right now, what was your transition story like? You know what, CJ, I have been working literally since I was 16 years old and um, I'm, I, I would consider myself a high achiever. I really always tried to do, do well at work, be on time, do a great job. Um, and I, you know, would get promoted over time, but I never felt like I was actually work that they were paying me what I was worth. Mm -hmm. Right. And I never felt like um, they valued me. Right. And so a couple of years ago, matter of fact, during COVID, I was just kind of talking to a friend and was like, you know, I really want to start a business. And it was some things that she wanted to do. And some of the things that we were talking about kind of matched and we're, we were, be we're actually best friends. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, let's just do it. And so we decided to start uh, Virtual Visions, which was a, everything at the time was virtual, right? And so we were like, why not start a virtual event planning business? And so we did that for a couple of years. Um, we learned a lot about Zoom, how to use Zoom, because everybody was at the time virtual. And so that's kind of how I moved into it. I kind of got tired of, again, people not seeing what my value, not being mm -hmm. paid what I was worth. And I just, I feel like I'm more, I'm worth much more than what people are willing to pay me. So... Uh yeah, definitely. And the other question I like to ask is the, the decision and the journey is congrats. Kudos to you for doing it. The decision and the journey aren't usually as easy as just how you shared it. So what would you say was your biggest challenge even or obstacle with going through, from making the decision to actually following through on it? Well, you know what? So I'm still working, right? We still worked. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the biggest challenge for me was the mindset. Right. I think a lot of times we get so wrapped up in going to work. Hey, you know, how am I going to I have to go to the doctor? Right. I, I have to have insurance or, mm -hmm. you know, the business may not in the beginning start paying me what I'm mm -hmm. used to being paid at work. And so if your mindset doesn't shift, you'll ha really have a hard time transitioning into becoming a business owner or an entrepreneur. And so for me, that was the biggest challenge. And if I can be honest and transparent, I still struggle with that. Of right. Course. Because I'm still an employee, but if I can be honest and share something with you, something just happened. I literally just got laid off. Like, two what? Days. Is this good news or like, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? News. This okay. is literally good news. It's funny is because I was on vacation for two weeks. Right. I got back and I went back to work on Monday. Everything was cool. Tuesday, 
we got called into a meeting, mandatory 15 minute meeting with the big guy. Right. And when he, when he came in, he introduced the VP of HR and I was like, okay. And I, I sent somebody a message in Slack and was like, oh, uh oh, right. And we found out we got laid off. So for me, I feel like it was orchestrated by God. So I feel like he knew that I had been wanting to quit, but I was kind of hanging on to the insurance, the um, the pay, right? And I, it's funny is because I was at an event a couple of months ago and I got a prophecy. And in my prophecy, she said that God was like, if not now, when? And I've been working my business for a while, but you know, as being an entrepreneur, you have ups and downs, right? You have your highs and you have your lows. And I kind of had been in a low for a while. And so during that prophecy, he was like, if not now, when? And I asked her, I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, he's saying like, if you don't jump on this opportunity for your business now, you're going to miss it. Now is the time, right? And it was a really, really, really good event. Um, I learned a lot at the event, but I also learned a lot about myself. And I was like, you know what? Listen, I've got to bet on me. Mm -hmm. And that's just a whole that's the whole thing about your mindset, right? And so this is a good thing for me. I have not stressed at all. And um, the severance is amazing. So I'm like, I just feel like it was orchestrated by God. I just, I know it was because it's my super bloom season. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, your super bloom season. Own it. I love that. And I also love because your story and your layoff story, your transition story is very aligned with mine because I feel like I manifested my layoff as well. And, and you know, they made the announcement and that we're closing the department. I'm like, oh my God, this is happening. So I totally feel like this is God just intervenes. It's like a God in universe is like, okay, come on. Something's got to, you're not doing it. Let's, let's help you out. You're saying and doing all the things, but you just need a little bit of a nudge. So I totally get it. Congrats. Kudos to you. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. So, okay. So today we're talking about procrastination. It's something Mm -hmm. that we all deal with. I mentioned even before we started recording that I tried to find a positive spin on procrastination, (laughs) but because just procrastination we think about is you're putting things off, you're avoiding things, you're making excuses. But there are people like myself who I'm a processor. I just need time to really think about something, mull it over before I say yay or nay. I have a deadline. It's great. It's whatever. But the real procrastination is is the other side where you're avoiding things. You're putting things off. You're delaying things. you're, You're trying to make those excuses. So how do we, we're all works in progress. I, I mean, I still, like, I actually legit procrastinate. I will say that, (laughs) but what, how do you, how, what do what do we do to avoid procrastination? Or like what's worked for you to get to the point where you can share with me? I would say what's worked for me is I noticed that a lot of times at night, um, when I when I get before I get ready to lay down, I kind of start thinking about my next day, right? The next day. And so for me, I start to plan out the most important things that I need to get done first, right? And if I can be honest and transparent, I have not mastered procrastination. I mm. still procrastinate in some areas. And the biggest I'd say challenge for me is the things that I don't want to do, those things that are going to take the most time, the things that are going to, that I've really got to sit down and think about and, you know, really mull over, right? Yeah. Um, or strategize over, right? Those are the things that I procrastinate. But I say, you know, planning out your day the night before, right? Mm. Making sure that you prioritize those most important things, right? And then don't overdo it. Right. If there's two or three things that you want to do, do those two or three things because those were the most important. Right. Those are the things that you prioritize. And then you might even have time to do a couple of small things. Right. Little small tasks that don't take a lot of time. I would also say turn that phone off. Right. Mm. Um, That's a big (laughs) one for me is because somebody will call me and then I'll get on the phone and I'll be in the middle of doing something. And then somebody calls. And now I've got to get back in that mind frame after I get off the phone. And then I'll start, I'll get on Instagram. And then I'll mm-hmm. start, you know, get on the social media. And an hour passed. And that was an hour that I just missed when I could have gotten something done. I could already be done with one of those um, tasks. Yeah. I'd also say a timeline, like with, with event planning, timelines are great, right? Because there are so many different pieces in event planning, timelines are great because you kind of categorize the things that are the most important, right? You prioritize those most important, right? You, you need a, you need somewhere to host the event, right? You need a speaker. Those are the most important because those are things that you could actually lose out on if you don't step up and get those taken care of right away. Right. Um, I would also say 
um, time blocking. Mm. Time blocking is great because if you've got a few things, two or three things that are really, really important that you need to get done, time block, right? Um, I know for me, I think the best first thing in the morning. So that's one of the reasons why I work out is because it helps me, it helps me have a clear mind. So I'll go work out, I'll come back, take a shower. And then those first couple of hours, I get the best thinking yeah. done, right? I'm the most creative. Um, I can get a lot done. It's a lot more quiet and I'm an early bird. And mm-hmm. so even when I was working, I would log in a little bit earlier because everyone's not bothering you. And you can right. spend an hour, hour and a half getting some things done before people start to pulling on you like, hey, I need this or emailing you and all of that stuff. So I would say those are probably four things that I would do. The time blocking is really important because you can schedule a couple of hours to get something done, maybe take a break. And also taking breaks is really good, right? Taking a break, get up, right? So I worked from home. So I I realized that getting up, sometimes taking a walk outside is good um, just to get some vitamin D, you know, come back and go back at it. But to me, those are four things that are really, really important to do. Yeah. I, 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 I completely agree. And the thing with the to-do list and, you know, prioritizing our items is people like to be busy, <laughs> but there's, you know, there's two, there's a good busy and then there's a not so good busy. Mm-hmm. And we just recently, somebody asked me to like, Oh, I always have to have these, you know, this, 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 this all this other stuff done. And I'm like, why can't you just pick one and just focus on the one thing? Like everything else, yes, of course, you have to get all those things done, but are they all a priority? Do you have to work on them all right now? Because then you'll end up with a bunch of half done or like a half done to-do list, whereas you just pick the one thing and you can actually check it off or scratch it off your list to then move on to the next thing. So I also feel like because, yes, I know I identify as a side hustle coach and the word hustle is in there. And, you know, there's there's a debate on the whole hustle culture. But part of that, I think, too, is we feel like we need to hustle. We need to be doing all of these things. And then because of that, you realize you can't, like, we can't. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. You are one person. Yeah, I agree with that because for one, you have to think about it too, is that we all, we're all we always busy, right? Mm. Um, and I feel like that's a part of self-care, yes. right? You don't have to be doing something all the time. Pick two or three really important things that you want to get done. Hey, you need to get a website done. Do the research. Find somebody, reach out to them. That's a lot, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that may have taken you a couple of hours because you want to be sure that you hire the right person or you reach out to the right person or... Yeah. Um, I know project management is my background. I have project Mm -hmm. management. And so even productivity tools are really good. Like um, Trello, it's really something that you just kind of type in, right? You're all of the tasks that you need to get done. You want to prioritize, right? And then once you start them, you move it to in progress. When you're done, you move it to done. Done, And so a lot of times I'm like one of those people that I like to see what I've gotten completed, (laughs) right? Um, So Trello is really good. And then I have um, sitting here in front of me, I have a board that I use, like a whiteboard okay. that I write down my to do's and I can kind of erase those or check them off as I go. So I, mm-hmm. it makes me feel like accomplished. But again, yeah. you have to do what works for you. Right. right. You definitely have to do what works for you. So those are things that actually work for me. Um, and again, like I said, I have not mastered this at all. I still struggle. Um, but those have been things that have helped me out tremendously. Yeah, and I can really I can co-sign on on what you're saying. Procrastination will always, you know, there'll always be something that comes up and things that you'll want to put off. You won't maybe you won't be feeling very, very motivated to do something. And and or like if you're in a nine to five and you have the side hustle and the nine to five gets really busy, and then because you're busy, you're tired and then you're feeling guilty. Like it's it's just a vicious cycle that we can be on. But what I've also observed about procrastination and making excuses, I feel like deep down, maybe this is the mind set coach in me. It's attached a little bit to, um, you talk about self-care. I think it's also attached a little bit to our self-worth. Because if we keep putting something off, we keep delaying it. You don't think it's worthy of your time. That's how I look at it, right? You don't think it's worthy of your time to, to, to get to it. Something that you want done. You are at your job, and you can say yes, because you have to. You feel like you have to say yes to your boss, your manager, whoever. You have to get these things done. But when it comes to your own things, you find excuses or you keep putting them off or you can't manage your time. And I challenge people and say, is it 
is it really procrastinating or is this is there something deeper there too when you think about why you keep putting something up because if you want to get something done get it done <laughs> that is good cj i didn't think about it like that yeah it's it, and it's just it kind of dawned on me it kind of came to me just it's one of the it's a word procrastination will always come up to, and struggling with time management we we all have that those issues especially if you're in the juggling the nine to five and the side hustle and I hear it all the time I keep I don't know I keep procrastinating I keep putting this off and I can't I can't figure out how to get off this hamster wheel and I'm like but if you wanted to get it done you'd get it done why can't you get it done why can't you figure out how to prioritize yourself so you know how to say yes to your boss, and you're saying no to the things you want to get done, ultimately, you're saying no to yourself, right? That is good. There that you go, be, Karen. I need some uh, therapy. <laughs> <laughs> because you're really like self-reflection, mm -hmm. right? Why do I not want to get this done? Ooh. Yes. That's good. Yes, yes, exactly. I know, I know, I know. So, okay, I know you said you're not necessarily um, by any means an expert. When you find yourself procrastinating or when mm -hmm. you find yourself actually saying that you're procrastinating, is sometimes, what do you feel like, coming off what we just talked about, <laughs> what do you feel like is typically the reason why you procrastinate and have to get back on track with you know, the tips you gave with planning and time blocking and self-care. I just don't want to do it. Right. If I can be honest, mm. I just don't want to do it. And it's usually something that's challenging and I don't feel like being challenged. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. It could, be, it could be because I'm just mentally tired. Mm. Uh, it could just be an excuse. Right. Mm. But now that I think about it, I'm like, okay, there's a root, right? Yes. Now I need to figure out what the root to why I don't want to do this. Right, right. Yeah. Because, so. yeah. Oh, I'm loving this because I can go on and on about these types of topics right. because, I mean, they're every day, every single one of us struggles with this. Every single one of us. I'm not sitting here saying, like, I love talking about time management. Yeah, I can give you tips and tell you what to do and help you work through. And I even have a whole uh, resource in my in my resource library just on, you know, proper time management. But at the core of it all, I feel like we procrastinate. It's like you, you, you said you don't want to do it, but then why is it something that we felt like we needed to get done and now that it's time to get it done, we don't want to do it. So there's a lot more to procrastination. It is. It right? is. Um, but you as um, a an event strategist mm -hmm. and you have timelines and deadlines and um, what do you find works best when it comes to in the in the in the, the scope of planning an event or helping someone to figure out planning an event mm -hmm. and there might be things again that they don't want to do what do you find works best to get the motivation to get the things done to to stay on the timeline to meet the deadline um i think that when i present the timeline to them so I help mm -hmm. them create the timeline. And what I try to get people to understand is that if you're having a pretty large event, um, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't even have to be really large, right? But the larger the event, the more time you need to plan things, right? Because there are so many moving pieces. I feel yeah. like when I present the timeline and give them like, hey, six months out, you need to have this done. This is what needs right. to be done. Right. right, right. Five months out, this is what we need to have done. And so I feel like when you break it up in pieces, it doesn't seem as challenging or as mm. difficult to get done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking yeah. it up in small pieces because people get overwhelmed when they hear an event. Right. And hey, mm. I've got people come from this event. It doesn't have to be as hard if you plan out early, start planning early. But then, like I said, if you break it up in different pieces, hey, six months out, you need to have month six, this is what you need to have done. Or, you know, for when you start out that first month of planning, hey, go ahead and knock the um, location out, knock your speakers out, or at least start, you know, trying to lock them down or consulting with them, you know, doing some, you know, even interviewing speakers, right? 
things of that nature. So when you break things up, it doesn't seem as difficult. And I think that's what usually sells people. It's like, oh, you know, I thought this was going to be really hard and challenging. And not to say that it's not, right? Right. It's right. Things come up. But when you break it up, it doesn't seem as challenging, right? Because it's it's in little bits and pieces. And if you get those bits and pieces done, by the time the six months gets there and the event is in a couple of weeks, you're like, I'm done with everything. I really just need to kind of go back through the checklist and make sure we're good, right? Meet the team and all of that stuff, but just breaking it down in different pieces. And I think that's what sells sells my sells my coaches or my entrepreneurs. Yeah, on yeah. Getting it done. Yeah. And everything you just said, you know, planning an event essentially can be a parallel to planning some of that or having some of the big goal in your, in your side, well, score side in your side hustle. And you're right. It's, it's people get overwhelmed. They need to overcome the overwhelm. That's another, the procrastination and overwhelm. They're, they're best friends or sisters, right? Um, so there are a lot of parallels there, but you're right. Break it down. Give yourself a timeline. I think and at the, what I really was hearing is accountability, too, yes. to really get things done, have someone to hold you accountable, have someone to say, all right, you had a month, you had six months or however long, you were supposed to get this done by this date and this time and, you know, giving deadlines, I think is usually like a really huge piece is the ones there's somebody there to light a fire in your butt. <laughs> You would actually, absolutely, this is why, you know, it's good to have a coach, right? Um, <laughs> and, and nudge, nudge. This is why it's good to have a coach. It's for procrastination to be, to overcome procrastination. Right. It's managing the overwhelm, breaking it down into bite-sized pieces, planning things out, managing your expectations, and having someone to hold you accountable. So on that note, I have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you have, speaking of being an event strategist, what do you have coming up? What are you working on? What should you be looking out for from Coach K? Well, um, I'm thinking about doing a drive or a ride along, right? Um, having maybe 10 or so planners to come out with me. We do like a shuttle. We go to like a hotel or something. Um, and I teach them about, you know, what you should be looking for, what questions you should be asking the sales manager, what are some things that you should be looking for in the hotel and all of that stuff. Um, and just kind of giving them the opportunity to ask questions, but then also working with the sales manager and someone, you know, the staff at the hotel or the resort. On, and you have your timelines, I'm sure, and your deadlines, <laughs> so you don't procrastinate. Um, right. But this has been, you know, I it's, it's, a, it's something we can talk about mm -hmm. like, all the time. Right. We always talk about procrastination and time management and you and then you've just really made it sound very you, you said this is what works for you. Mm -hmm. And you were able to knowing your background and knowing that time management is a huge piece of what you do, that it's you've, you've, as, as much as you say you haven't quite mastered it. You have because then you are successful in your business. Right. Um, so thank you very much for for being here with me, sharing with me. But I am not letting you go just yet. Do okay. you have a nugget to share with with me and the listeners and viewers today? I do. I do. Okay. I, do, I, do. I used okay. to have one, I, one nugget was stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Right. Okay. All right. That part. That's one. <laughs> One I got today was, and I'm not going to steal it. I don't know who came from, but my friend Vern said it on her live. It says, speak what you see until you see what you say. Ooh. And I was like, oh, let me say that again. Speak what you see until you see what you say. And I was like, oh, that's good. So I don't know where it came from. I don't want to take credit. I don't even know if Vern came up with it. But she said that today and I took a screenshot and was like, oh, my God, I got to take a screenshot of this, um, of the comments, because I, that's something that stuck with me. Um, and that I, I want to keep that in mind. OK. All right. Love that. Thank you for sharing. And it, it, it ties up the our conversation beautifully and wraps everything up very nicely. I like that. Thank you so much, Carrington, for uh, being here with me today and can't wait to support you and, and sharing what's what you got coming up and cheering you on now that you are free from the, the nine to five and you can run your business <laughs> yes, <laughs> <thank again>. you. <laughs> but I thank will talk you. to you I will talk to you very very soon okay awesome thank you CJ for having me I really really appreciate it thank you